There's my girl. Come on, Miss Candy. Come on, Miss Dixie. Go ahead, Dexter. Come on. They ain't never satisfied. Come on here, Dexter. Come on here, my boy. Come on here, Miss Daisy. Come on here. Hello everybody, it's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Um, we're just taking care of our other herd of cows. We actually have two herds of cows. And uh, we are looking at the creep feeder system here that we have set up. We have one set up over at Pecan Grove and I'm having to make a few modifications because I had to here even. Um, but the, the, the babies are almost getting too big to go through this one here. We're gonna be moving uh, the black one that you see out there coming through here and the little female and Miss Candy out yonder. We're gonna be moving her over to Pecan Grove uh, in the near future. I've got some fencing to do. I don't wanna to put too many on too small of a piece of ground. So I wanna get a little bit more fencing done and then I'll move them over there and we'll only have the three right here left which at Deep South Homestead it's been really kind of like overgrazed for a while. So I need to take some of the pressure off here and move the others over to Pecan Grove and see if we can't get a little bit of break here at Deep South Homestead because it, we want to let everything rest for a while and have a chance to regrow, recuperate and everything uh, because it's been really used hard now for, for, for many, many years. She said, who, me? Mm -mm. She said, it wasn't me, I promise you. It was you. It was you. We saw you rubbing your head on it. Look there, watch it. Anything they can find. They love to rub. They love to rub. Everybody likes to be scratched, you know? But anything they can find to scratch on, they like to scratch on. And it's springtime and they've got their winter hair on and all that kind of stuff. They try to rub all that off too. And she looks back there to say, it wasn't me, I promise. But yeah, him is dead. He's, He's going boy. over at Deep that Pecan Grove before long. Yeah, he'll go to Pecan Grove before long. Yeah, him is a good baby boy. Yeah, him is daddy's good baby boy. Yeah, him is a good baby boy. Him, come on. I'm just going to rub you up under your bottom of your chin. Yeah. Him is a good boy. Him is daddy's man. That's for sure. He's been with us for all he, since the beginning. Several years. We got him from a petting zoo when he was a little baby boy. We try to get our animals used to the uh, loading chute system before we go to move them. That way they're not too spooky. Um, even though you get them in there, they don't like it. Uh, they feel like they're hemmed up or something. Now the little, the little female seems like she's doing a little bit better than the male is. It's been here, what, two, three days? Uh, yeah, two or three days and they... He'll, he eventually gets his confidence up and he'll come back, but he's getting to the age now where he's getting a little bit, you can't trick him many more times. Yeah, and you have it set up 
have it set up and this is a, a ramp system going up into the trailer i leave the trailer sitting here so that that way i'm not bringing it in here it's not banging around um of course i have wanda with me this morning i normally feed them by myself and, and they know there's somebody different here but i leave the cattle trailer sitting here so that when i get ready to load them it's not like i'm bringing something in here new that, that they don't know is here they're quite familiar with it being sitting there and, and it's we're open where they can go on in if they yeah want to. if they wanted to they could go on up in there um and when the di when the time comes now i am going to try to go see if i can't purchase a gate system to go at the end of this right here so that when they go in there i can shut the gate and they can't come out you know i mean they their only choice then will be to go up in the trailer and uh that makes it a little bit easier on handling them because since i messed my neck up i can't i can't wrestle with the animals anymore and I have to let them, and so far, you know what, when we get ready to move one, most of them walk right up in there. They don't even, I take feed and just walk them right up in there. But now he's getting where he's, he's got a little bit of a jersey in him, but he's a little bit uh, more skittish than a pure red Dexter. Hey, baby boy. Uh, Where's my little man? Uh, Where's my baby boy? So, I can keep them used to me, you know, being around me and stuff like that. Now, the little girl, she's a little bit more skittish about being touched. She doesn't like it so much. He, on the other hand, was with the brown one that we sold, and he was a little bit, uh, he was a little bit gentler uh, with the brown cow that we, a uh, brown bull that we sold. But he's still not a bad, he's still not a bad animal. He's just got that little bit of jersey in him. And a Jersey Bull has a tendency to not be the best for handling, you know. Uh, she's got Jersey in her too, so uh, she's a Dexter Jersey cross. And we're not sure what we're going to do with her. Uh, I don't need her. I may sell her or do something with her. We'll see. Uh, someone, they want butt heads. Yeah, if someone had time right now, you know, be the time to work with them, but. Oh, she would definitely make a good milk cow because she, I can look at her girth underneath her neck and tell that she may be A2 already. Um, she just needs someone to spend some time with her because I'm, I don't have a lot of time to spend with her. And she usually, when we walk away, she'll come back up in here because he bullies her around a lot. And she'll come back up in here when there's nobody here to bully her. Well, guys, this right here is what we're talking about. We're going to let our land rest this year. We've worked hard for the last 15, 20 years, I have, to keep grass out of this. And now it's just coming back up with a few little weeds and stuff like that. But we're, we're, um, we're just going to let that go. And then this summer, we'll just keep it mowed and let the land just recuperate. Now, it's not only going to be this garden. It's going to be the one in the front up there also. We're gonna let it rest also and, and not do any kind of tillage or anything like that. Just let the let the weeds come back and their roots will go deep down into the soil and kind of uh, mine up what's down there and put it back into the top soil. And then when we mow it, the, lead, the, the, the blades off of everything falling on the ground will put the uh, nitrogen and the carbons back into the soil and stuff like that it'll help to build the soil back up because even here i mean out in there you're even going to see this right here the red crimson clover that we have here the red clover uh it'll be coming up all out in here also these uh these terraces they all come up with the red clover i um, mean all up in here the red clover comes up and everywhere around here so we'll just leave it it's a good nitrogen fixture to put back in the soil so we're going to leave that for the, this year. Another thing we're noticing here at Deep South Homestead is all of our fruit trees, like our apricots back here, our peach trees on the end down here. Um, we have plum trees. We have uh, mayhaws. We've got our um, mulberries over here. Everything, our crab apples, everything is beginning to start budding and popping and blooming. Uh, the pear trees are done starting to put leaves on. They're fixing to put some blooms on. And if everything goes well and we don't get that freeze like they said we're not going to get, 
then it's possible this year if the wildlife and the drought and everything doesn't affect our fruit that we might actually get a good harvest this year from everything we're keeping our fingers crossed because it looks like this year may be the year the blueberries are all popping over here looks like this might be the year that everything if the weather cooperates may come in and might be productive we're in uh, our first high tunnel here our grapes our white seedless grapes we're just now starting to see some green starting to pop out on them down here so hopefully this year they'll go ahead and just cover the whole tops of this thing up and we'll have a massive amount of nice grapes in here now what we have decided is over at pecan grove where we have our chicken pen we really don't have any shade for the chickens so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh one or two of these pots i hadn't quite made my mind up yet we're going to dig up some of these cavendish uh, miniature bananas that we have here and uh we're going to take them over there and plant them on the outside the chicken pen on the side that's the sun's hitting them at the worst and these things grow so fast that in the summertime they'll grow up and make a shade for the chickens and then when the winter time comes and the first freeze comes they'll die back down and the winter sun can get in there and they can come out and be in the warmth the banana tree is really a win-win for us when it comes to something like that because not only do the cattle you know chickens rabbits everything will eat the banana leaves so uh as they get bigger we can take the bottom leaves off and just feed them to the animals and it's a win-win for us the chickens get a shade if they live long enough the trees we get bananas and then the cows if we need to we can give them a little treat with some of the banana leaves the rabbits would love them i'm sure but we're just going to completely revamp this uh this high tunnel uh probably going to plant some sweet potatoes down that side over yonder because we've got the panels already up for the vines to grow all up on I think that's probably what we're going to do over there. And these pots have been grown in now for, I don't even know how many years now. At it's least been three. Like three to four years now they've been grown in. And we've had some problems with white flies. And I'm pretty sure that they're harboring in the soil of some of these. So what I've thought about is just to take all of these pots and take them out to the back of the pond dam or somewhere like that, um, wherever, or maybe just throw them out here and being we're not going to be plowing the gardens this year, just put them in the garden areas and uh, till them under, you know what I mean? Or just let them lay out during the hot summer sun, maybe to kill some of these white fly problems here. And then we'll bleach these tubs down and we'll refill them with some new soil and stuff like that so that when we get ready to grow in them again, we'll have all new medium and everything to stop, start with. Because one thing that you don't you have to understand about high tunnels and greenhouses and stuff like that is that they create the perfect environment for insects to raise in because they're warm. Uh, most of them are humid. Uh, they get watered quite frequently. I mean, they have all the, all the stuff is there that they need to be able to not only just grow, but to explode in the insect population. So you have to be on top of it. And we have, look, with white flies, we have sprayed and sprayed and sprayed organic materials. And it just keeps them at bay. It doesn't really get rid of them. So this year, we're probably going to let the, the sweet potatoes, we're going to let them go in here. But the rest of this, we're going to try to revamp it and try to get rid of as much of the white fly infestation as we can. This is our strawberries now that we've thinned them out a little bit. They seem to be wanting to try to bloom and uh, get ready to put on some more uh, some berries this year for us. Now, as you know, if you watched us, we took out a bunch of them and we took them over to Pecan Grove and we put them in the Vego raised beds. Um, and they are doing fantastic. And guys, uh, the Vego beds has worked out so well for Wanda and I so far. It has just been amazing. And the strawberries that we put in them, they're just now beginning to grow a little bit. Some of them are getting to bloom already, which is a, an encouragement for us that they're going to work out all right. And plus in the uh, 
the description down below if you're interested in looking at them. We'll put you a link there where you can go and check them out. Uh, I think there is a uh, there's a discount there also if you go through us, use that link. If you're interested in the Vego beds, uh, so far with us, we have had no issues and we're loving them so far. Guys, Wanda and I were just sitting here laughing about these uh, these blackberries here. Uh, we were talking about an invasive species. Uh, this is the Freedom Blackberry. Uh, we we planted those things here years ago, and honest to goodness. Every year, we have dug these beds up and thought we had every piece of root out of these beds. And uh, because I've spent so much time over at Pecan Grove, we had these come back up in here. And look at them. I mean, they're just, they're taking over again. Uh, you can't kill these things. If you're a bad gardener and you think you have no green thumb, get you a Freedom Blackberry. And if, if you kill that thing, then you might have a might have a green thumb. I mean, because I'm gonna tell might you, I have a black thumb. You might watch things say you might have a black thumb. Is one that's right. You might have a black thumb, but we don't do anything. And I mean, even down here, we have we, we got some little asparagus that's starting to pop up. Hand me that one. And oh, I see Miss Wanda done been in here. Mm -hmm. Look at here. I love fresh asparagus. Look at that. Yep. And the blackberries have made their ways down now into the asparagus bed, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to. And you dig. see how far that is? Yeah, I mean, look, look, the original ones were planted right here, or the original ones, and we dug this bed up down like a foot deep, two foot deep almost, well to the bottom of that thing right there, turning this soil, trying to go through it and get every piece of root out of it and everything. And they still came back up. And I told Wanda, I said, you know what? And just, they're putting on and... Just let them go. I don't know if they're blooming, but they're uh, putting on. I saw... Yeah, right here, right here, right here. See ya? I mean, you got to get, you got to look for them in there. They're getting ready to pop, put some blooms on up in here. Uh, so we'll have blackberries in here. Probably in within... A month? Uh, within the month. Yeah, right here. We will have some blackberries in here. Yeah, right up on the tip up here. Look at that. That was there. It's get ready to open. Mm -hmm. Right there. They're I mean, everywhere. So we're, we'll have blackberries. Yep. And we actually had some right, right here, but the freeze, I think. Right there. There was actually little berries on it, and the freeze came and, and got them. Uh, so we get them off of there. We got blooms all in all these. Well, uh, I guess the, the, the biggest kick I got out of these things is when uh, Cuz Strickland was here from Mossy Oaks uh, hunting the country uh, and his podcast, um, A Fistful of Dirt. Uh, Cuz has been like an icon for me since I was a young man. And uh, he came in, and matter of fact, he was standing right here somewhere. Go back and watch that video. Uh, he was... Uh, he was standing here and he turned around and he looked at me because these things were hanging with the big old... These Freedom Blackberries are huge. I mean, when I say huge, they're really, really big. And Cuz was sitting here and he looked up and he said, Man, he said, this is like being in Planet of the Apes. Now, I didn't watch Planet of the Apes, but I'm pretty sure there must have been some berries in there or something or some vines that had huge berries or huge grapes or something other on them for him to make that comment. But these things, I'm telling you, they're awesome, you know. They got a, they got a good taste, and they're very prolific. And you get them in an environment like this in a high tunnel, and they just they have no thorns on them, so you don't have to worry about them punching the plastic or anything like that. And they've just made their way up on tops of the pipes and all this stuff up here. And I, I imagine by the time this summer is over with, if I don't mess with them or cut them back. They'll probably be all over in here everywhere. Big seedless grapes over here that's gonna probably take over before by the time this summer's over with. And then you got the freedom blackberries over here that's growing up. And what can I say? Free food. That's the way I look at it. Well, we're over in Ms. Wanda's high tunnel right now. And uh, we're trying to make some executive decisions here about how and what we're gonna do with Deep South this year as far as growing. We've pretty much decided that the outside beds will be sweet potatoes because it, I'm just being honest, at Pecan Grove, the deer, the deer problem is just so bad to 
I don't know, we don't have a place fixed up just yet to be able to grow our sweet potatoes like we need to be able to grow them. So we're going to try to utilize both of these high tunnels to try to get some sweet potatoes in them so that we're assured we will be able to get some this year. Now these middle two beds in hers, we were just sitting here talking. Uh, this high tunnel is not near as old as mine is. And we're talking about coming in, maybe reamending this soil here and putting in some good nutrients back into it and maybe taking the panels down. And once we take down these panels, we're thinking about planting the white okra in here. We had such good luck and success with the white okra that we might want to just try it in here because okra loves heat and there's no deer pressure in here and okra is, doesn't have a lot of enemies you know other than wildlife and white flies do bother it quite often and aphids will come to it but in here i feel like these both of these beds right here if we planted them with the white okra that we would at least be assured some harvest out of here. We're going to try to plant some over at uh, Pecan Grove, but the problem over there is deer once again, and we're trying to give ourselves a little insurance this year by using the high tunnels and letting the fields rest, using some of the high tunnels for our growing over here so that we're not just doing nothing over here. I mean, we want to make sure we're doing something. And... We're probably mainly over there this year going to be trying to utilize the Vego beds because as one to our age, we're trying to make sure that we can continue to garden as many years as we possibly can. Uh, and if we get the infrastructure in now and get the Vego beds in now and get them set up in a way that we can use them very comfortably and figure out while we still can what grows best, what does best, in what situations, in what environments, whether inside the, uh, the, the high tunnel over there, whether we do some outside the high tunnels, you know, what is our, uh, what is the end goal for these? And we need a little bit of time before we get you know, much older to be able to figure this out so that we can at least be able to be a little bit more knowledgeable as we age about what we can grow and what we cannot grow. So that that's our that's our goal right now. And guys, I'm, I'm telling you, check out the Vego beds. So far, uh, I'll be honest with you, I went to their site here the other day. I did not know up front that they carried as many products as they do. Uh, Y'all saw on the live stream the other night, if you watched it, we showed the new plants that they can ship to you now. Uh, I didn't know they shipped live plants. And Miss Wonder wanted some for the kitchen garden type area. So she got her some tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that, okra, I mean, uh, cucumbers. And I had no clue they could do this. But the plants arrived. They looked fantastic. They were not messed up. The soil was intact. They were just beautiful plants. And we're going to be growing them over there also. So if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff, go down to the link below and the description. And in the description, you will find a link to the Vego beds. And you don't necessarily have to buy a Vego bed. They got a ton of other stuff if you're interested I mean, we're all, we're actively going through the thing right now, looking at what might benefit us the best as we age, because there's a lot of stuff that we're seeing a positive benefit out of. And not only that, you know, they're going to be inside a high tunnel. The high tunnel we got, we purchased from Grower Solutions, and uh, there'll be a in the description down below. There'll be a link for that also. There's a there's a code. Uh, you can save money on whatever you buy. And guys, I'll tell you what. These high tunnels has been a lifesaver for me and Wanda. I mean, they have allowed us to be able to do things all year long that we normally would not have been able to do. So go check out Grower Solution also.
Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.